I'm gonna give it a few minutes. Uh, Look, people. Are there people? How can there I people. tell? Look at people. Hooray. <laughs> All right, people. Uh, oh, yes, I do see people. Now I know where to look. Um, welcome, early joiners, I guess on time joiners. Um, we're going to wait a couple minutes. We'll start at 10.02 so that everyone has a choice to join us. Um, so yeah, hold tight. We're ready to tell the story, but we want everyone to be there. We're up to 30, 31. Okay, I'm not going to do a count. <laughs> Again, for those of you who have just joined us, we're going to start at 10.02 to give everyone a chance to get in here. Some people are probably right now installing the uh, Zoom client. <laughs> yep. So the, the, the scariest thing I ever did involved like one of those super slick conferences and they were, they were, they were recording it on like for a professional production and there were like cameramen on swooping cranes and things. And I thought, okay, I'm not going to think about that. Ben, you've you've done stuff on stage, right? You were a theater. Yeah, person? I've yeah. I've done a few things. Um, what did, so you're saying? The crane scared you? The crane was it was it, it just brought things up from like the the community conference level to oh, oh god, uh, a lot of strangers are looking at me right now. Uh, <laughs> yeah, any anytime anybody shows up with a steady cam rig, it's always like, what the hell is that? <laughs> Just about to start. I'm putting some information in the chat box that I will describe in a moment. All right. So uh, we're going to get started. Um, welcome to Ease into Observability. Ha oh, oh, we love buds here. Um, and uh, we're going to talk today with a couple of folks about how to build a reliable service with observability. Uh, but first, I want to uh, point your attention to our option for having captions. If you're interested in having captions, there's a URL in the chat, or you can turn on captions at the bottom of your uh, at the bottom of your screen. It should be a menu option. Uh, if you have seen this uh, and you're seeing captions and it works, let us know and let us know if you can hear us in the in the chat box. I think that people can hear us. All right. I think we're going to get going. Um, <clears throat> all right, great. Thank you, sir. We are also uh, going to be recording this webinar. We're doing it right now. And uh, later on, we'll be making that recording available to you by email. So if you signed up and you have to drop out at some point to, due to the real world impinging on this lovely occasion, then you'll be able to watch and catch up later. Uh, another option uh, to, that you should know about is we'll be taking questions at the end of the of the podcast of the webcast, um, but we will not be answering. Uh, and you can ask them now in the Q and A panel that's also available in your menu. Um, but uh, we will not be getting to them until the end. Just you know, you can ask a question, and we will uh, check it out at the end. So using that. And uh, we have, uh, thanks very much to Nikki Rose for doing the captions. Um, also, we're seeing that there's a couple of chats. And we have Kelly also in the chat uh, available to answer any questions that I'm not able to get to. So I think that's all the housekeeping. Let's move on to introductions. Uh, first thing I want to say is that we all look like we're not taking any crap right now. Um, this is actually a really great story, so <laughs> bear with us. Um, welcome to uh, CJ Severio, 
uh, Ben Gardella and I'm Rachel Pye Perkins. Uh, ben and CJ are from Ease. Do uh, you want to each say a little bit about yourselves? Start, let's start with CJ. Sure. I've, I've been in the Silicon Valley for about 30 years, which is a terrifying amount of time. Uh, I've worked in startups most of that time um, and done everything from technical writing to writing uh, cell phone apps in Java to making distributed systems work. Before I was at Ease, I was at NPM, making uh, your node modules folder very large very quickly. <laughs> and Ben? Uh, yeah, my name is Ben Gradella. Um, the infrastructure manager at Ease. Uh, I spent most of my career as a dev, mostly Java. I'm not far behind CJ in the time that I've spent in this particular universe. Um, I made the transition over to, I guess, the DevOps side maybe five, six years ago, and uh, probably never going to leave until it's time to leave. Uh, so, um, yeah, that's, 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 that's me right now. Oh, welcome. And I'm Rachel Perkins. A lot of people know me as Pi or Pi Bob. Uh, historically, I've been a tech writer, and I've been ops adjacent my entire adult life. Uh, now I am, uh, I'm in marketing, it's so weird, uh, for Honeycomb. <laughs> so let's move directly into this is what the past looked like for you. Uh, can you talk through what you were, what you walked into, especially CJ? You yeah, I, I think I joined like less than a month. Uh, three, I joined three, three, three weeks. weeks, three yeah. weeks after that. I, I have three so. weeks on you. So we, we walked into the, the same situation, and I think we are part of the response to the situation, which is that there was an enormous .NET monolith. It was over four years old. It had been written as a prototype, um, and then written into production, and written through a whole lot of industry changes in that, in that time. He started out as a proof of concept of medical marijuana delivery, um, and it took the same platform and mutated it through legalization in California. Uh, there was an attempt to microservicize it in the sense that like a lot of new code was written around it in a little cluster of Node.js microservices. There really wasn't a lot of like architectural thought behind that. Mm -hmm. um, everything was running on AWS. Ben will talk about that a little bit more because when he, he talked about the situation he walked into <laughs> and they, they hired me because I don't believe they'd ever had a single big day in which they stayed up. Oh, wow. Um, you would have, you would have a, a 420, which is a big, big thing in the marijuana industry, as you might imagine. What? Um, <laughs> and, people, you know, there, uh, dispensaries would be, you know, be planning for a lot of load and the, the site would go down and this happened, uh, in the two years previous to when we got there and I was hired in a little bit of a run-up to this year's 420. Mm -hmm. Ben, talk about you. Oh, uh, yeah. yeah. So uh, <laughs> my first day, so there's, I want to talk about two days. My first day and then the first day that CJ arrived because they're, they're similar. Uh, my first day, uh, I sat down, you know, got acclimated. I did have a, a solid uh, mentor that who's still my uh, right next to me every day. And he showed me the ropes. But what I noticed immediately is they have this thing called deploy party. And it involved uh, trying to deploy code, having it fail, trying to deploy code, having it fail. And I kind of looked over and said, what's going on over there? And they said, oh yeah, it's just this how things happen. It, it takes four hours. And I was like, it's quite a party. Oh my God, that sounds like, and, and how off every day, every day you do this. Oh, okay. Um, yeah, let's not do that anymore. Uh, so uh, I, I got uh, immediately involved in that for a few weeks and uh, didn't really fix anything in those three weeks. And then CJ showed up. Um, speaking of which, I have to call out that um, since she, uh, I discovered that her uh, Malcolm Tucker bot was, was hers. I was like, well, okay, this is someone I can work with. Um, <laughs> But uh, the, um, you know, uh, the, 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 uh oh, ben, did we lose no, Ben? We that. lost a Ben. Oh, you're what? back. You're back. We what see. happened? Uh, you just froze for a moment. Oh, uh, okay. So. Oh, it says it's unstable. Yes. All right. All right. Hey, classic. Right. Am I good? 
Yeah. You're good. Okay. Um, and so uh, CJ's focus was far more about the, the, the applications and did a quick dive on that. And I just sort of watched from afar and then um, things started to really go sideways in March. Mm -hmm. And um, that was our first real outage, and that's when I saw that's when I saw Malcolm Tucker show up. Um, in, in Malcolm Tucker does not have a very polite mouth. It's, no, no, no. Yeah. And and uh, and and I, Mal, that's my inner love child is is Malcolm. So um, I I knew that that I had an ally in the sense that we needed we needed something, and I had followed I had followed honeycomb and charity for about two years and not understanding the word that she was really talking about and um, but i did have an idea that there was a new way of seeing some some microservice catastrophes and uh i didn't say anything but cj said it first and i was like yes let's try something um because i couldn't make sense of looking at aws looking at whatever logs we had whatever observability that we thought we had was um a lot of regex soup you know it was oh yeah um i mean i just don't want to say like all of the what i would call first generation logging services that i'm intimately aware of <laughs> logly is what we had here uh you know slack and uh, slacks um uh i'm forgetting them all now but um they all require some sort of prior knowledge regex and and service name tags that every time i start a new job i'm like okay what's what's the super secret who has the saved queries, right? Um, and the awful naming. Can we talk about naming for a minute, CJ? Um, <laughs> the absolute disaster of the legacy code naming cute names of things that meant nothing to anyone, uh, especially no for like ours. No context. And there, you know, there is people uh, that have been here for three, four, almost the entire time, and some people for a, a year. And there's just they're just passed on knowledge that you just have to acquire over time. And it was steep. And yeah, CJ. Mm -hmm. I, I want to talk a little bit about like the the observability situation we were in. Like, I want to go back to those tools. Yeah. Like, oh, the sure. team had the team had some tools. Um, it, it they did have lo all the logs going into Logly. Um, they had hosted Graphite set up, but we're not using it, and we're definitely not emitting any application specific logs. And they had some decent front end observability. I think Sentry is, is absolutely great for figuring out what's going on with front end errors, but it wasn't wired up to anything. So mm -hmm. they were in this situation where they, they, they thought Logly was great. If one of the people I interviewed with on the way in said like, you know, there just isn't a lot of observability stuff for .NET. And I'm like, Honeycomb immediately came to mind. I'm like, oh, oh yeah, well, okay. I'm gonna blow your mind when I get, if you hire me, I'm gonna blow your mind on that one. Um, <laughs> Because I, d I don't think anybody realized their story could be better. I think mm -hmm. they thought that logs were it. It's classic. And, yeah. yeah. You're mired in it. You're down in it and you don't see a way out. Mm -hmm. So you're like, this is fine. Right. And, you know, the, the scaling situation they're in, we can move to your next slide if, you, if you'd like. Sorry, I... I it's all good. It's, all good. It's, it's the business had, had been growing enough that a fairly naive solution really works totally well, right? When you're small, right? Mm -hmm. It's it's like, do you have product market fit? Do Can you change what you have well enough until you have a thing that does what your business needs? Now, Ease had actually arrived there. And, our, you know, they had arrived there quite early. It turns out that people like uh, legal marijuana delivery about as much as they like legal pizza delivery, right? Uh -huh. uh, it's... <laughs> It, it, this is pretty this is absolutely fantastic in a state like california where you have a lot of people like me i'm in the peninsula right now of south of san francisco there's like no legal dispensaries anywhere near me because you know palo alto doesn't like that kind of thing um but they're all avid consumers okay so ease hits product market fit and it starts succeeding and that's when the trouble starts that's when your naive solutions stop working you've got to take that stuff to the next level and this manifests as like latency issues like you start seeing the system slowing down and it also manifested as every big business day yeah. um there would it was a it was a classic distributed systems cascade failure where you're like okay this one thing's slowing down all right we see a symptom over here but we don't know what it is and then suddenly everything's down mm -hmm. you know, so the 420 this year was my first chance. Uh, I think it's my second chance. You're, You're forgetting uh, March. I'm forgetting <laughs> March. Um, 
in so March yeah. of, yeah, go ahead. <laughs> so yeah, you had, you had initially, I just want to sort of kind of set yeah. the stage here. Yeah. So you started off, you came to this organization, mm -hmm. they had this older platform built for yep. a, a particular uh -huh. purpose, and it was kind of working, right? You, mm -hmm. And it was specifically to deliver medical marijuana to people who had prescriptions. So that was pretty scoped. Uh -huh. And then all of a sudden, California legalized recreational marijuana. Yes. And suddenly the, the business is booming, but you know, and it's, that's a great problem to have. But it was a, still a huge problem for you, to, and you had some serious problems, and that's what you're. Success you're is a catastrophe that you have to survive. <laughs> yeah. um, it, it's it's if it's the the classic like uh, you're caught in this bind. If you engineer for the kind of um, wild scale you hope to reach, you probably are overcomplexifying early on. But you have to be able to rewrite and scale later on, and mm -hmm. doing that, putting yourself in a position to do that is. Is, is work and forethought and information. So mm -hmm. the first signs were in March on a perfectly normal Friday night, the site went down. Now I say quickly. the site, yeah, quickly. The site went down, like that's very vague, right? What, is, what does it mean that the site went down? We, we did, the team did not understand why it had gone down. Like no idea why okay it got really slow and then it stopped responding and we had to put on maintenance mode let it cool down turn it on at which point it fell over immediately again why why yeah. i will say actually cj there were several people that knew uh why? how well, knew the why um right but uh had not really been empowered to really get that type of stuff at the forefront because yeah. it was right. ship, 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 so, right? Yeah. Right. You know, so there's, there's all kinds classic, of reasons you get there, right? Yeah, 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 yeah. I mean, there was definitely some some engineering knowledge of understanding, that, oh, this is going to happen. There's plenty of people telling telling leadership in the past that we have no room. It was very much uh, cash is full. When cash full, database go down, everybody go down. Like the, mm -hmm. the, the, the crew is whoop, yeah. uh, really sharp. Um, so it didn't take some people by surprise, but it took everybody else, including CJ and I, by surprise. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so you, you, know, needed, and, you need yeah. that visibility. I needed visibility, and, and the answers weren't there. So at this point, uh, we're walk, I'm walking into a, sort of a, a place where any data at all would be a help. The first attempt was trying to use the tools that we had, which is to, to get um, hosted graphite hooked up to our, to our monolith and at least get some data about what's going into our Redis. We, th this company, which is this, this business brought down, made completely saturated Amazon's largest elastic cash instance. And <laughs> I, I said, okay, something, something's very wrong here because something we're not happened. doing that much. We can't possibly, why is it? And no insight and logs, aren't telling you that not unless you thought in advance to frame the question that way logs are perfectly great right i don't ever want to give them up i need them for forensics and oh, security yeah. analysis yeah, yeah. right but well, what so was the biggest point, i'm sorry point, what? is that when you brought in honeycomb like after that march situation it was actually as after 420 when it uh -oh. happened again okay and i said okay at this point i had leverage like okay the biggest day oh my god this is the biggest day of Ease's year of the marijuana industry's year you do a lot of preparation in advance for it as a business you you get your supply chains in place you your dispensary partners are spending money to buy to buy inventory they're yeah, putting they're drivers on do. shift so they can they can deliver all of the industry revs up in order to do banner business on that day. And Ease was down for eight hours on that day. Was it oh. eight hours or five hours? It was some unbelievable, like- It was like, hours. Yeah. It was, yeah, it was hours. It went- Not, not all in a row. We yeah. went up and down. <laughs> <laughs> By that time, see, I will say that my, my biggest improvement to the system was I had, I had created the ability to bring up a maintenance page via yeah. a chat op command. Oh, yeah. um, so we did, we did that a lot. We put it up and down, up and down all day oh long. And at this point, we had the leverage to like in the um, executive attention. It's like mm -hmm. when an exec, my, the executive over me had to, to go and apologize to dispensary partners in person, you have a problem that your business is taking seriously. And I was able to, to um, say to, to say, okay, we're gonna we're gonna stop doing these things. Mm -hmm. Stop and we've got logs, great, whatever. We're going to do the work to integrate Honeycomb into this system so we can figure out what's going on. Mm -hmm. The other, you know, 
the fact is you there's a lot of turnover in the engineering team the system burned people out this yeah. this environment burns people out when it takes four hours of human attention to run a deploy or it, or you're down all the time and your response is to like just pour human time into it yeah, or money into it. it's yeah. it's stressful right so so at this point like okay we're going to do things radically differently mm -hmm. we are going to instrument with honeycomb and the first thing i did was when i got it set up and i convinced my boss like okay we're gonna spend this money we're gonna do this it's gonna pay off please trust me is ben was my first um my first ally internally because i think no one had figured out like that this was actually going to be better than logs yet it mm -hmm. may be surprising to everyone listening to this webcast but everyone's like we have logs why do we need this see i can search logs <laughs> i can draw no yeah. this graph right yeah so oh. ben just started pumping our elb logs into it, it took like me that. 10 minutes <laughs> I'll just, let, I'll just let you know, it was the easiest thing for me to ever do in the history of my ops career. So it was like, please do something. Um, and that's all I had to do is I just turned on all the ELBs, put, pointed them at, at Honeycomb, and then voila. Mm -hmm. All right. Um, so this what, is do, like, do you remember what the first thing you saw, CJ? It was, no, what was the first thing I saw? It was like some, some surprising status response, like wave out of out of bounds right mine mine was the sheer volume of 403s everywhere just while the site is fine mm -hmm. like, right just the sheer just, well <laughs> how do i put this um so many of our little microservices f uh, around our monolith um just kind of flap for a lot of reasons there's a lot of noise right and i was surprised to know, notice just how much background noise of, oh, there's an occasional burst of 500s. What is that? Oh, that's a, that's a driver's shift change. So there's a time in which all the drivers on the road, you know, oh. end their shifts and another one. And then there, in that time, there'd be these little spikes of 400s and 500s. And, and it was the first time you could actually see that and go, what is that? Why is that? How is that happening? Who's doing that? Um, mm -hmm. And that was just the tip of the iceberg. And then seeing that, so you, you yeah. mentioned your, your bosses, the execs had to go talk to the partners mm -hmm. who had spent a ton of money getting ready for 420 and then totally didn't really get to take advantage of your service. Mm -hmm. uh, and it seems like, you know, at that point, you, you needed to have something behind them going, yeah, we're, we're doing something differently. No, uh, the business wanted, to, business wanted to know, are we, are we fixing this? And, you know, the answer is yes. And this is how we're going to measure our progress. This is, first, we're going to be able to put a number to the situation right now, put numbers to how many active orders we can have in the system, how many active drivers we can have on the road before this things start getting hot, you know, hot. And then look at our progress moving those numbers forward. Um, it's, it's hard. Proxy metrics are like, they're hard, right? Um, so in the short term, what we did was look at other much more meaningful than engineering numbers, like number of requests coming in, uh, what the request rate looks like during certain things. Now, all of these things are possible to do with metrics, but the integration with everything was, was um, work the team was the team was pretty stressed you know yeah. at this point right yeah. <laughs> it's the the easier wins were super valuable to us one of the it was like the ease of integrating ELB log ELB logging just ELB logging you know which is enough structure to turn into data was enough for the team to start to be able to start framing Feel questions hope. answer yeah. those questions and observe some changes and that was the step into getting them on board behind the, the harder work of integrating honeycomb with our dotnet monolith like it, integrating it with the node web services was api servers was pretty easy mm -hmm. but the the monolith took a little more commitment took yeah. a little more sweat it was a bit of a yeah, yeah. legacy code base so at and this point you had you had this you you figured out some things in your existing mm -hmm. platform using honeycomb and you saw mm -hmm. a way forward mm -hmm. but you had to make a big decision anyway and and what what happened at that point uh i i eventually reached the point where i said okay i don't think we should should iterate on this in place i mean we have to iterate on this in place to say, survive but i think we should rewrite and there was some we 
this period post 420 was um, a big discovery and research period where we took a team that didn't really understand the code base very well. We sent them into it to document it. What are our APIs? How are our clients using our APIs? Um, uh, what's going on in the back end in this driver dispatch algorithm? How does it actually work? These are questions that nobody at the company still could answer because all the people who'd written it had, had, had left. Burned out. <laughs> burned out, right? Like, I think, I think uh, literally it burned out two engineering teams before, wow. before I got there. It was, oh, it, it, it's, it's, I thought it was in, in a really, and I don't think the fix is hard. I mean, the fix is work. But it's not a mystery. Like, get data, get data, yeah. have get data plans and use that to make decisions. <laughs> make decisions. Measure the results of your actions. If you're not getting going where you need to reevaluate, right? It's yeah, yeah. Um, so then you came to this. You got some data, and you were like, "Well, I don't know if we can really go forward with this platform." We're gonna. Right? We're we're in the middle of a rewrite. Um, yeah. It's it, and the rewrite starts actually at, at the ground up. Uh, it's uh, watching watching what Ben was going through for those first four months was, was tough too. Like yeah. it starts with tools. Yeah, so it's you were, you were really, able to make that decision. Yeah, yeah. So. but in the meantime, we had to stay up. Mm -hmm. uh, right. So let's talk a little bit about the the, yeah. the new platform that you're going to and what you're planning to do there and how you were able to make that decision. And then we can you know talk about yeah. the difficulty of doing two things at once. We're, we're rewriting, um, re rewriting it a little bit more intentional microservice um, architecture right now and a little bit more intentional um, understanding of what Ease's current business is, just not the same as what it was when the first system was started. Um, uh, and we, doing this with considerably better knowledge about what that system currently does. Writing in Go and Node um, it, Node is part of every modern stack because you have a website and uh, Node is it's very fast for someone like me with a strong uh, JavaScript background <laughs> to write fast services in it. But we have some people who are super huge fans of Go. We're doing that too. Ben, okay. I see your... Uh, uh, I was just going to say also yeah. fully, fully containerized as well. Um, yes. We're embracing containers hard. All yeah. right. Um, so cool. So you've yeah. got this new world you're going to. Yep. Yeah. Um, but at the same time, you have to keep the existing site up, right? We've we gotta, got we got to stay in business. <laughs> in service. So yeah. what were you able to do there? So I, I said that like the, the 420 push and the initial ELB, like, okay, we're getting data. Oh my God. Uh, justified work where we integrated Honeycomb into that monolith, into OG. And that, that took us a little while. The engineer, um, who was working on that went went uh, went around a couple of times with you because I believe we were pumping a ridiculous amount of data at at you to start with. It's a it very chatty service. And <laughs> was this was this the, the the monolith you're talking about? The monolith OG. It's called okay. OG because right. yeah. The first. Yeah. So this is this is uh, <laughs> this is Randall's work. This is Randall's work. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, so that was non-trivial for him, uh, but it was it. Oh my God! Did it pay off when we started looking at what OG was doing? Yeah, yeah. It looks like we got some some yeah. uh, explanation of some of this. Yeah. Uh, the, go yeah. ahead. Well, go ahead, I, I was just there's there is a question I was trying to ask. I don't know if you know CJ. Like, uh, what is what was uh, uh, the any de specific .NET solution, or was he just making HTTP calls to the API? He was making HTTP calls to the API, and he had to he he eventually had to batch. Um, because uh, he wasn't sampling, and which I think people should should do um, if they have any large large volume at all. It's okay not to sample when you're tiny, right? Fine, but yeah. um, uh, he, because it turns out, like my first reaction to seeing the OG, OG graphs in Honeycomb was, oh my god, this brave little toaster! How much work it's doing. <laughs> For so little effect, you know, it's 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 the the stunning revelation of what was going on in our code base. Now, I think you could get there with code tracing tools. You can get there with code inspection. I, there are a bunch of ways to arrive at this answer, of like, what is your code doing? That Honeycomb did some 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 really the ease of use of the interface where my boss, my boss at the time is a data data guy could walk into Honeycomb's interface and make the, um, 
the spreadsheet you see sitting in front mm -hmm. of you right now, like, you know, ad hoc queries, or someone can walk in and not know in advance what the question they want to ask is, right? Yeah. Log, logging, logging is phenomenal, but you kind of have to know what you're looking for and you have to kind of, you have to know a little bit what you're asking at the time you write the code, right? Yeah. And metrics are useful to a point too, because they let you do that ad hoc graphing and the, mm -hmm. um, and without waiting for, you know, 20 minutes for something to, to, to draw, but they don't let you say, Hey, it's that one user ID that's causing this problem. What the heck is up with that? Mm -hmm. because they can't have that cardinality of data in there. This is where like the smash, the union of logs and metrics is just what makes Honeycomb awesome. That plus ad hoc queries and the, the yeah, inviting yeah. nature. Yeah. Like, and, and I just want to say yeah. at this point, again, the only time that DevOps and ops had to put in was just point the logs. And then I walked away. Mm -hmm. I didn't even know this work was going on. And that's like the best part. <laughs> Of, of, my, of my story with Honeycomb because seriously, yeah. be I, I yeah. only care about the HTTP between what I could see between all these services. Mm -hmm. I looked, I, have, I haven't actually haven't looked at used in, mm -hmm. in using Honeycomb in a while, but I looked up, here's just an example of my saved queries, all 400s, just the sign-ins. This is what I named them. And it's great because I, I, it brings me back as I'm looking at them. Uh, breakdown auth by user agent, app, and I had a million different one of these app X grouped by certificates or grouped by status code, all 409s everywhere, Super 500s by request shape. So it was like, you know, I just said, give me everything. And it's like, bam. Okay. And you know, if I can, if I have that question, I can like look at Ben's saved queries and just hop, hop off them. Yeah, so yeah. The, what is this telling us? This this graph or this uh, spreadsheet here? This is this is what uh, Shri, the person who wrote this, called um, uh, API damage. He wanted to express um, the cost of servicing specific API endpoints in terms of the number of servers it took to just just answer that one question. And he did this by looking at the number of times we call it and the number of the, the average request elapsed time. Like it's, it's like the, the simplest possible way of slicing that, right? And he could just do it, bam, bam, bam. Okay, this is where we're gonna focus our effort. Why are we calling this post API endpoint that much? And why is it cost that much to run? Yeah. You can approach the problem from two directions. You've been aimed at where the worst API damage is. And you could say, all right, is the website being a good citizen and calling it this often? Is the, the app that directs our drivers around, is that being a good citizen and polling, mm -hmm. polling for this data that like that? Ah. Uh, Just not knowing where to yep. start is a huge problem in, in, in this situation. And this was able to tell you what's gonna, you know, what yeah. work is gonna make it have the most impact. I will have a theory. Uh, I think this is what's slow. Oh, no, it's actually this other thing that's what's slow. And why is it slow? Because the website's calling it too often, which is another part of the problem, right? You might have a perfectly mm -hmm. performant endpoint that's, that's being horribly misused by a client that didn't understand what to do. And I think um, you were able to make a change mm -hmm. that in the front end that address some of the issues in the back end? Yeah, this is, this, is, this is our front end team, our web team embracing Honeycomb in order to prove that their work was effective. Like this, there was a whole like, series of examples like this that um, of a front ender would we would identify, okay, this API is costing us, it's painful. Like we're calling it too much and it's too slow. Back end team would go in and look at why it was too slow. The front end team would say, okay, why are we calling it that way? Can I, can I rewrite? And they would accompany their PRs with, with before and after data. Like, hey, <laughs> like, look, this is, I did it. <laughs> look at how less often we're calling this now. And the back end team comes in and says, hey, look at how the, the average elapsed time goes in. Like, this is, Man, this is, I did blow their mind with uh, .NET observability. It's, it's totally possible. Um, yeah, to know what's affecting things and how your changes yeah. are making it better. And, so, and for some, some mm -hmm. people, you should know that mm -hmm. this is a familiar pattern. We were DDoSing ourselves quite a bit. Mm -hmm. uh, <laughs> oh, yeah. A lot. But, yeah. And still are to, to some extent, but, but like a fraction of what we were before. I want and, to tell to you. Clear, this is the yeah. old, this is mm -hmm. the current system that mm -hmm. is in production right now. It's in production right now. Yeah. Yep. So you're doing all of this work while yep. at the same time building your new your new world. Yeah. And you're able to keep the site up. 
Yep. And, and you, so when we were talking about doing this webcast, it hadn't been Thanksgiving week yet. Yeah. So I want to tell you, how did yeah, it go? I, I'm going to totally, I'm going to tell you one more story about a thing Honeycomb let us see. And then I'm going to tell you about uh, our next big day of the year, which is, right. so there was, there was another thing where a moment where we're looking at um, instrumentation in OG, we're looking at why a particular call was like so slow. And like, why, why are there 200 network spans underneath this one call? What's going on here? It turns out that there was like, uh, a, an in, a loop invariant was being recalculated every pass through a loop and the loop invariant happened to involve a networking call to data that didn't change. It was classic. <laughs> <laughs> so you know that's like an, not an example of like it's not the client wasn't ddosing the service the service was dosing itself and you know that, she kidnapped herself dude you can you can you can find this through code inspection right you call tracing a whole bunch of ways to find this but in this case we're just like click 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 what the what's what um so again it's it's patterns jump out that you can then follow up on and use a number of other tools on you know starting with your ability to read code and understand what it does um yeah so, yeah. yeah so anyway fast forward right in 420 after 420 i i talked to the engineering team and i told them that my goal actually i talked to the company i told them that my goal was to hand them a boring uh big day Mm -hmm. Like that was that's the goal. An right? Uneventful day, yeah. Uneventful. You want your systems to just do what they're supposed to do. Oh, you to want scale flights. to the load in understood ways, and to let everybody relax and be very happy about doing a lot of good business, right? And and oh boy, Ben, last week, Green Week. This is it's called Green. You want to talk about what Green the Week green, is or gr yes. Green Wednesday is? Green, green Wednesday specifically. Yeah. We we expanded it to Green Week, but it really was about the Wednesday before Thanksgiving. And the best part was is that we had yeah. enough confidence to where no one came in on Wednesday. Yeah. Uh, no no war room. Nope. No war room. No no ordering food. No planning to be there. We were all home with our families. I barely looked at my phone that day. Um, Amazing. Mostly it was out of reflex. Like I kept checking Slack for, for no reason and, uh, yeah. until I finally like, okay, I'm going to just, you know, it's go to memory. Again, I'm going to go. Yeah. It's muscle yeah. memory. Yeah. Trump traumatic. And this was at this point, what we had been there eight months, yeah. nine months, 10 months. Yeah. Yeah. So we're still, we're not even, neither CJ and I have been here a year yet. And there's already PTSD that mm -hmm. and I are dealing with. <laughs> And, and I think Green Week showed it. I mean, for me at home, I was just like, why am I so freaked out about this? Everything's going to be fine. And, and uh, wait, so it's Green Week because like, it, people are buying marijuana so that they are ready for their families. They're going like, home before you get on the plane. Before, yeah. you, yeah. <laughs> before you get on like, the plane, you want to have your gummies. You want to have yeah. all your microdosing worked out. It's a Cause, thing. Because if you're going to talk to Uncle, stress. yeah, your, your terrifying in this, uncle. In this terrifying <laughs> timeline, you need some medical help. <laughs> so, so the industry again the industry prepares for it our dispensary partners to prepare for it mm -hmm. there are promotions that they spend you know months planning for on and this day were, right yeah. yeah they were able to to succeed because you got you got your, your it, just, your it didn't flicker together. it didn't flicker for the first time i got texts from former employees saying i'm still i'm really stressed for y'all today how's it going and i'm like mm, mm, it's kind of that the way it's supposed to it's nice so yeah, we were talking about so this. Uh, yeah. this there's so much to discuss here. We're running really yeah. long, I think. I'm um, sorry, but <laughs> it's okay. This is a great story. Uh, mm -hmm. That that you you know we talked about this a little bit before that you couldn't get this sort of information out of your previous tools. Do you want to you talk a little bit more about this, or is this long pretty much covered? Yeah, I think we we pretty much we we pretty much covered it. If you don't like metrics, are are, are totally great. Like thing yeah, to them. have around you absolutely need logs right you need them to to analyze what happened long after the fact is the security audit trail all the things you need logs for right um but they're not good at helping you frame questions you've never had before um or pointing you in the direction of new things uh yeah it's i keep sorry i keep like clicking on the chat box and then it forwards the Oops. slides i apologize <laughs> It's, it's you have 
it, this, this, this is, let's move forward to the civilized age. You need to know what your servers are doing. You almost, you have a distributed system, right? If your database is not in the same process as your server, you have a distributed system in some way. Therefore, you have complex interactions that you're not, you can't predict when you design. You can have hunches about it. So just build something like this in from the start. This is true for our next gen services. All of them have Honeycomb built in. Um, like I just finished a, a, about a month, month and a half of pure tools work for our next gen system. We have services deploying to Kubernetes now and they all have Honeycomb in them from day one. Um, mm -hmm. Like without no effort from our engineers to do that unless they want to like emit specific annotations or start doing really deeper deeper integrations app aware integrations in addition so to just the raw had time to like yeah. do go from the left hand side of like no yeah. time to do this work that you're describing yeah no the, time to address technical debt i now have the time to work on what the next generation is because we the engineering team is is at work on features and next gen stuff and not on firefighting. We're not right. trying to figure out what's bringing AWS's largest Redis down. Instead, we know what we're putting in Redis. We know how big it is. We know how often we're reading it and writing it. And yeah. it's not a mystery. Yeah, we were, we were totally in the tech debt doom spiral of so mm -hmm. much effort spent just finding things that you couldn't make any progress to get out of it. Yeah, um, and knowing that the site was go down, it's going to go down for every possible situation. But why? Uh, yeah. We didn't know. I, we had hunches, and and you know. Mm -hmm. So now you're, you know, you've got one thing that you mentioned earlier is that pe some people yeah. knew about this, but they weren't really able to convey what was going on in a way that made the, the, the upper level folks understand or different departments understand that we needed this help. <laughs> Ben's got an expression on space. It's, it, can be hard to, it, it can be hard to make that justification, right? Numbers, numbers, uh, we, we ended up working for um, Sri Ganeshram, who's, who's leaving to go do his own startup, the big jerk. Um, he, oh, uh, <laughs> <laughs> but he he's very data driven he he runs he ran he does, he's his data analysis tool a uh, to team which is pretty does pretty great stuff uh, and he he was just very happy to get numbers like here is where here is what these servers are doing here's why they're doing it here's proof we're moving it forward and I was able to persuasively make that case to the executive team Right. And right. So with this data, oh, go ahead, Dan. You have a uh, well. I mean, part face. part of the mix that I the CJ is going to paper over a little bit is also uh, Honeycomb provided her combined with her sheer personality and drive. <laughs> Um, forced people to pay attention. So, you know, I do want to say that, like, I couldn't have done what she did, um, which was, you know, stepping outside of yourself as a normal engineer. And I do think this is kind of an important note is that armed with something like Honeycomb. Um, gives you confidence to walk in that room with mm -hmm. people that have, you know, E-level, e uh, you know, much closer to the money, much closer to, you know, what, what the, the VCs are, the, the pressure is a little different, right? Mm -hmm. The story is a little different in those rooms as opposed to engineering pressure. And uh, that changed the climate quite a bit. And so that's kind of, you know, it wasn't all honeycomb that just did it. It wasn't like, oh, they see the data and that was it. There's a yeah. little bit of clout. There's a little bit of chutzpah involved. <laughs> hey, a I've lot done of this. human. Yeah. yeah, a lot of I'll, human grease. Yeah, yeah there's, there's there's a human story to this that I don't <laughs> want. I don't want people to think, well, if I buy honeycomb, I'll get the executive's attention. Yeah, it's no. not quite that simple. You gotta you gotta make a case. You gotta connect it to like, look, business is involved here. We did not do as we did not. We did not enable our dispensary partners to sell what they expected to sell in these days because our engineering was not up to snuff. This mm -hmm. is what we're going to do to fix it. This is how it's going to pay off for us. It's not going to be zero work because nothing ever is zero work, but this will be directed work and we'll be able to prove we've made it better. Yeah, having real data. And, 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 you're, mm -hmm. and so we haven't talked about this a ton, but you're also building this new site and you're yep. not doing it with more staff. You're not no, you haven't no. added to your team to do this. No. Uh, yeah. How how is that possible? <laughs> it's that's I'll tell you in a year if it is. 
or is, is it year? triage okay. i mean effectively <laughs> yeah triage it's like yeah. a mash unit right mm -hmm. we just we just created a different wing in the mash unit and and uh you know part of it is a juggling of morale no one wants to get stuck only on legacy but there is you know plenty so of in interesting legacy to still do and i'm actually trying to introduce containers in legacy as well to keep the skills, uh, you know, compatible yeah. so that like people, you may not be learning, working on the new system yet, but we're going to do new stuff inside the legacy. Yeah. And, and we're, we're, we're able to slowly pull more and more of the engineering team into the new stuff and to give people time to cycle in and out of writing new code versus just maintaining old it's code. Taking less power because it's taking less it power to run. Exactly. Less, less psychic power. Right. Less emotional, emotional burnout. Yes, yeah. exactly. Mm -hmm. People don't think about that enough, that how much of an impact and how much of that you're taking out of your team yes. to the point where they won't have it to give it, anymore. Th this, this right here, this, yep. this matters to me. It's just, it just gutted me to see what happened on 420 where, where people ran around they were they, we had people just devastated that they felt they'd failed the company like i uh, it's my fault the site's down like no it's 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 not your fault and it's there's a better way here that doesn't involve us all just feeling bad or yeah. answering pages or frantically mm -hmm. trying to guess what's going wrong we can we can use tools we there's can have lives <laughs> yeah <laughs> So yeah, it would have been a great deal harder. Um, we got some quotes here from discussions we had earlier, and I think it was uh, was it Shri who said we uh, no, it's you who said we can't. Yeah. Afford durability is a myth. You know, you can't. You know, the expense. How, how, how the hell do you know what your distributed systems are complex things? How do you know what they're doing at, at any degree without having telemetry from them? It's like sending a spacecraft mm -hmm. up and not getting telemetry from it, right? Like yeah, yeah. what? And, and now, um, you know, you've got some pretty great business value out of this as well, right? You were mm -hmm. able to go back to your partners and say, hey, Green Week was okay. Green Week went uh, green, okay, right? I, I won't mention a number here because I don't think I could do that. But I can say Green Week the, last week, uh, the, the Wednesday before Thanksgiving, was our biggest, biggest business day ever. Mm -hmm. um, and that was, yeah, I just feel, <laughs> feel good about that. <laughs> I bet the whole team does, right? Yeah. That your, your engineers feel like more empowered to continue to make things better. They see a way through this this or what seemed like an endless hole of problems before. It the 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 fact I I they they believe it now. We can be successful. We can scale, and it can be boring. We can like do put all this work in upfront, and then we can have a relaxing, excellent day. It, um, it, it feels nice as engineers to have a, a, a positive story to tell mm -hmm. in your in your startup experience, right? So uh, the ones you, you know, I, I keep telling people every time, you know, no one works at the same company for very long. So all you have is stories. And the first thing you do when you go to another place and to interview is you're going to tell them stories. And <laughs> you don't want to ha walk into a future employer place and say, let me tell you about all the disasters that went you know, that I, that I was a part of, right. Um, you want to have some wins and, and it's really nice to give a group of people that have had so many losses to get a win. Wow. I'm sorry. I was also looking at the questions and you've been busy, Ben. <laughs> uh, CJ is doing all the talking. I'll do all the typing. <laughs> oh, are there, uh, where, where are the questions? Where uh, there's the a, there's a Q and a oh, chat. There's a Q and a oh. bottom bar. <gasps> Look at that. Check that out. And someone has a question for you, CJ. But um, so <laughs> is, there, is there anything else, any last words before we dive into questions? And folks, please ask questions and we will we'll go through them in just a few minutes here. Any last words from Ben or CJ? Yeah, I mean, I just have one card that I, that I put that might help for people that haven't used Honeycomb before. From Again, from an ops perspective, and I, I am a past dev, but I honestly don't spend any time thinking about stuff that CJ thinks about in terms of you know, where are those recursive calls inside the code? I just see mm -hmm. the whole system. And what was really nice when I, you know, turned on all those ELBs to just flood it to Honeycomb is that I'm just looking at HTTP, right? Here's the microservices. I see them all. I see all the traffic between them and all the application logic and application errors don't matter. It's like, what, how are these systems responding to each other? And these are the explosions I'm seeing between them. That tells, a that was, such a good first story 
for us to go deeper with because it told us where to go deeper instead mm -hmm. of just guessing. Yeah, um, and, spray. <laughs> right. Just having that I the idea that here's a system that's going to tell me HTTP first and then, and then you can go deeper later. Um, and it, cause again, it's all about for an ops team. I do not want to set up a system where that's okay. Now that's just the beginning for you. Now you have a seven week project ahead of you. Uh -uh. Yeah, yeah. We do not have time for that in, in the ops world. So that, oh, that's the only thing I wanted to add. And, and did you, you used, um, I think CJ might know the answer to this question, you used some, uh, one or more of our beelines, is that correct uh, we, no? Yeah, we used the, the node, the node beeline thing. Uh, we've got mm -hmm. that integrated into our legacy node apps, just a handful yeah. of our legacy node services. And that's services. an auto-instrumentation thing. Just yeah, and it's, and it's auto, it's, it's in our next-gen framework um, as well, built in as middleware. Mm -hmm. uh, I can, I, that, that's open source. I can find the code for that. Um, uh, Chris has posted it somewhere. Um, <laughs> and we're also using the Go Beeline. Uh, yeah. We built a we built a, a, some lightweight opinions around the Echo JS uh, Go framework, and uh, the Go Beeline is built into that too. Oh, yeah, and then, so these Beelines are for various you know popular languages, and they do some auto instrumentation for you on all the sort of standard libraries, just for folks who are following along um, so that you can get started super quickly in the way that you can with uh, just piping your logs in as well. So this can instrument your own code. Um, cool. So yeah, you're, you're <laughs> now like prepared to be, you know, it's under 420 is a little ways off, but uh, is the oh, next big day like right before the holidays, just coming in, in, in this later this month? Or? I don't, don't know if there's anything big in, in December. Uh, the cannabis industry is a little bit seasonal. One of the reasons why 420 is so huge is it kind of, it's the start of the summer and warm weather in most of the North America. So it's like, and heavier, it, people enjoy that stuff more during mm -hmm. uh, those months. Yeah. 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 <laughs> Less it's, prone for stress. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, I'd be really curious to hear if you, you know, we'll, we'll check back in you. Obviously, we'll be talking to you before then, but next, next yeah. spring is at 420 to see if you continue to have a calm time. Uh, without uh, stressing out your employees while still making money for you and your partners. Yeah. Um, and we'll be curious to hear the state of your, your new world and when you'll be able to move over to that as well. Uh, le let's see, we've got a lot of questions that were, that have been asked and answered. Oh, I see three open questions. Uh, we got, um, oh, John, do, I don't know what pricing tier we're on. My boss handled that. I mm -hmm. just told him, Please liberate the cash, boss. <laughs> I mean, it's it's mostly the pricing structure usually involves retention, right? Retention yeah. volume. Mm -hmm. So we've we've definitely tuned down some, you know, of our non-production services that have zero retention and keep, you know. We need to move to sampling um, too. Yeah. Uh, it's we will get just as useful data from it. Um, yeah, but, and yeah. some. Some people are, you know, some people are worried about sampling because they don't understand that there are ways to make it really tunable to the kind of data you have based on what's in the data and the frequency at which it's coming at you. And we have all those options available so that you can see more valuable data in in the in the larger stream of your data. So that's which is, a, yeah, it's it's, but that's like really about you. You can spend the money if you want, but if you need, you yeah. can get good answers from things. Absolutely. Um, Okay, um, and someone's asking, do you use Honeycomb to log any kind of security audits? I'm going to move to live answering until we get through the questions. You know, I no, and I'm not sure I would ever send Honeycomb critical user information, obscured only, right? It would, like, we have an opaque user ID token. We'll send that so that we can, like, figure out, oh, it's this one user who's having this terrible problem, but no. Um, no, the I... <laughs> I wouldn't yeah, want to do, do that. We have a secure proxy option, and it, it, you know, your critical data doesn't leave your premises un, unencrypted. And if you have more questions about that, you're welcome to like ping us uh, in our on our website by intercom or however you want. And I'm, I'm talking to folks and who are listening because uh, we do offer some some secure ah, options. Yeah, uh, that that are you know that are are solid enough to be used, for example, in the healthcare industry. Oh, interesting. Yeah. I yeah I. I hadn't moved as far as doing thinking about that. Like I, I'm next going to. Yeah. <laughs> so cool. 
Uh, I think we, I don't see any, I say I've got these two open questions here. I think they're, they're actually more responses to other things. So I will. Well, I mean, I could say with, with Ramon's question, you know, uh, VPN traffic, I suppose, you know, could be interesting if I was worried about, uh, you know, some attacks, but, um, you know, we're, some of our security uh, issues haven't really been revealed by Honeycomb so much, but some of the alarms that, that do, we set trip wires you know, effectively yeah. that, mm -hmm. that, you know, like I was saying, these four and 500 explosions, especially some, we, we've had some recent auth attacks, right, that um, were driven by Honeycomb queries. Yeah. Um, this is, that, that's yeah, so. like we didn't touch on like that. Like there's some Slack integrations here. Like, oh, our 401 rate is going up. Say hello in Slack. Yeah. Or, mm -hmm. Yeah. And not yeah, only in, yeah, Slack and, and AWS alarms, it, it's, mm -hmm. it's, it's rather nice for that. Um, mm -hmm. So. Okay. Cool. Uh, okay, so it looks like that question is answered. Does anybody have any last questions before we end up? We're right getting to the top of the hour. So this actually went perfectly to time. Um, yeah. I hope it was fun as advertised. <laughs> yes, I was really looking forward to this. <laughs> Uh, I, I, I love the future that I live in currently in the sense that I get to interview you folks on for work. It's great. Um, any last words from anybody? I'm, I'm happy. I'm happy to have a use case. I've been watching y'all for a while. The sc scoop of paper is pretty cool. The, just this idea that you can query log level cardinality with metric level speed, really this, this mm -hmm. is super good. I like that log level cardinality with metrics level speed. I'm write that down. <laughs> yeah, and I and I just like the opinionated UI, right? It's it doesn't ask me of anything that I don't. In fact, it it gives me options, right? Like I don't need to know um, all of the different uh, API endpoints that my own systems has. It's going to tell me what they are. Yeah. Um, you know, not I, I never having to use regex. Um, <laughs> Uh, can, can support it if you need to. So there are different personality types. I'm that personality type that I, I don't. I don't want to have to have uh, memorized or have a you know a book list somewhere or a scratch pad of memorized queries. Um, every time I go to Honeycomb, it's a, it's I play. Mm -hmm. you know? Yeah, exploring is great. Exploring is super easy, I think, in Honeycomb. All right. Well, uh, I'm going to wrap it up. Uh, thank you to uh, Ben and CJ for your time. Thank, thank you. you to Nikki for the captioning. Um, and uh, for those of you who joined us late, uh, we are recording this and we will be sending anyone who registered uh, a link to the recording when it's, when it's been processed. Please feel free to share that link so that uh, with your colleagues. And um, if you have further, if you want to look for further information, there's a bunch of other good stuff in our uh, resources section, white papers, e-guides. I'm partial to the e-guides and white papers because I write most of them. Um, and then feel free to follow us on Twitter at, at honeycomb.io. Thank you very much, everybody. Thank you. Thank you. How do I end this thing?